Hi, welcome to Health Exchange. Today we're with Dan Daly, the community liaison of the Plymouth County Mosquito Control Project. We'll be speaking about mosquito-borne viruses, the role of the Mosquito Control Project, as well as prevention for mosquito-borne viruses and what Mr. Daly does in the communities um, as his responsibilities with the Plymouth County Mosquito Control Project. Dan, welcome to the show. Well, Kim, thank you for asking me. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, we've seen a, a lot of uh, mosquito issues over the years. Uh, we've talked to them about them a lot. Could be up at the State House. It might have been down in Washington, D.C. while you were a commissioner with the, with the project, but it's, uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, I've been gone almost three years now um, since, since I left. Um, can you allow the viewers to know what your role is as the community liaison? It's a role that I've had since uh, about 2012. And one of the things I do is I, I get out into the communities and I offer my services to speak about mosquito-related issues, increase mosquito awareness and and uh, I've spoken to a lot of councils on aging um, and, and, and certain other groups. But I, I like to stop in to uh, visit with health agents and uh, find out how they're being impacted as, as, as things going uh, around like right now. I've uh, been down in uh, the areas that are critical uh, risk and, and asked the, how things are going for them and how the community is reacting. And so, the, you know, so I'm just, it's, it's an outreach kind of a thing. It just makes sure people know who we are and uh, they, they have a degree of comfort with us and, and ask for our services. So if there wasn't an organization um, that the viewers may have, mm -hmm. can they reach out to you and ask them? Absolutely, it would be my pleasure. Uh, whether it's two, three people or, <laughs> or a larger group, I'd be happy to show up and I give them whatever information I could just to, again, raise their awareness of uh, mosquito issues and I love to talk about repellents, picking the right repellent, because uh, no matter who you are, whatever promises uh, you know, uh, people are making about eliminating mosquitoes, you don't eliminate them. You reduce the numbers, and they're always going to be there, unfortunately. Now, you mentioned repellents, and repellents is such a huge thing. And we're, we have in Massachusetts what's called a 25B product. It's your organic and all natural products. They have no peer-viewed studies. Um, and they have no label requirements. They can put anything on the label they want with these products, even if it's false. Um, so going into repellents, since you mentioned it, um, can you go into some detail for the viewers on what is recommended for personal prevention? Well, first of all, I'd like to go back to what you were just talking about. There are actually a list, of, the last time I looked at it, there are 31 ingredients that people can put in a non-EPA registered product and sell it as a repellent. And, and that would be a lot of uh, oils, uh, you know, and uh, I'm trying to think of some cedar oil, uh, oil of rosemary, um, and, and is, they're not supposed to make a lot of claims about it, but you can still, now why they EPA allowed that, I have no idea, but you can have stuff out in the stores, you look at it, and typically they sell it, is, doesn't have DEET. And a lot of people, that DEET is a, is, is a word that bothers a lot of people. But so, but again, there are 31 things. You can mix them up. And dried blood is actually one of the ingredients I was looking at. I'm not sure where that came from is a great idea. But uh, I think I, I always recommend for people, when you go out and you look to pick up a repellent, turn it backwards normally. Turn it to the back side. Look at the little print at the bottom. And it's really hard. Uh, unless you're wear, even with my glasses, sometimes <laughs> I have a hard time looking, but I look for that EPA registration number. So if it's an EPA registration number, you know two things about it. Number one, it's been reviewed and it works. And number two, if you use it as directed, it's safe. And, and the only thing you know about those other products is that they're not going to hurt you. <laughs> they may not do any good. And if they do give you protection, it's going to be very, very short-lived. That seems to be a, a, a pretty much... The, the feeling uh, out there, but not if you read <laughs> the labels on some of those things. But you know, so some people, um, the number one product by far is DEET. There's no question. They have, I believe it's 80, 85 percent of the market. There are over 500 different products on the market with DEET in it. And some people worry about it. They worry about if they, uh, 
they, they apply too often, there could be issues, and they're probably right. You, you really should follow directions. <laughs> that, that's the whole point. But there are alternatives. I would hate to someone to say, look, I really don't like D. And I'm, so I'm just not going to use anything. I'm going to use one of these other things. But there are other products that are EPA approved that work and they work very well. For example, uh, picaridin. Picaridin is a product, uh, and it's the only one, and I, just to say, I, I spent a lot of time in Spain. Uh, you, you, know, <laughs> you know, I go out there about 10 times, I'd rather 10, uh, uh, 10 weeks a year. And the only repellents I've seen over there uh, contain picaridin. It's, it's big, it's been there for a long time, and picaridin is, uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it's just as good, according to most people, as DEET. It's a clean uh, feel to it, it's not oily at all. Uh, this IR3535, which is based on an amino acid, and that works very well. Uh, you have oil of lemon eucalyptus, uh, and it's, it's the lemon eucalyptus, not lemongrass, oil of lemon eucalyptus, and a synthetic version called PMD. And those products uh, are, are all registered with the EPA. So again, you know they work, and you know as long as you follow directions, they're safe uh, for use. And these are things you, you, you can buy in a lot of different places. Uh, you don't have to go to a, a sporting goods store and pretend to be a hunter. Uh, or <laughs> uh, I've picked up some really good stuff uh, at Ocean State Job Lot. I've picked up some good stuff at, uh, at Christmas tree shops. And uh, so, but again, I'd say make sure you're using something with EPA registration on it and, uh, and, and then make sure you use it. And to reapply per Whatever the, the directions are. are. Whatever those instructions are, uh, do it, yeah. And one of my favorite things, and my six-year-old and my eight-year-old have followed in Adriana's older sister's footsteps mm -hmm. of being the mosquito kings yeah. at sports practices and yeah. in the playground, and <coughs> they're advocating how to use it properly. They stop people from the this. Oh. And my son, is yeah. just like his mother. Can you read? You spray it in your hands like this, you rub it together and you put it on your face. You don't want respiratory issues. So at home, please follow those directions. They are so important. And remember to reapply. That's so important. You put it on once, it lasts whatever duration per the active ingredient, per the label. Reapply, please. It's so important. Um, what else can we do to reduce mosquitoes? Well, we know people, uh, they always hear the same thing from DPH, and it's, it, it's, it's a legit. So you keep, keep saying it over and over and over again. Get rid of standing water on your property. Now, those mosquitoes that are on your property are, you know, the ones in the bird bath, the ones that are in that tarp with a little puddle and other things, are the ones that are most associated with West Nile virus. But... We're at a point now, anyone who gets a mosquito bite is wondering, <laughs> is this something I should worry about? I know that I have a daughter who, uh, uh, my grandson got a mosquito bite, and she called me to say, should I take him to the doctor for that? I mean, that's, uh, that's where we are right now. So why not get rid of any mosquito as best you can, including uh, that, that, that mosquito that's in your yard right now? But uh, so, you know, get rid of standing water is a, is a good thing. Um, and they talk about dusk to dawn, but there are a lot of mosquitoes out there that are day biters as well. So don't just think because the sun's up, you're totally safe. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate to that. They went out in the yard saying, what's going on here? I'm being attacked by mosquitoes. So there are day biters out there for sure. Um, Dan, could you re please repeat that to our viewers at home, <clears throat> um, that it's not just uh, dawn, um, dusk to dawn? concern? Yeah, I mean, I, I was, uh, uh, there are mosquitoes that are day biters. And uh, I was in, uh, uh, it was, I was in Hull a couple of years ago, and there was this one part of Hull, and they couldn't go out their doors day or night. They couldn't go out to grill something, they couldn't go out <laughs> to eat, and these were day biting mosquitoes, but they're also night biting. They were 24-7 mosquitoes. So you have to be concerned about that. We have 24-7 mosquitoes and in Halifax too, um, and I'm sure you and, do. And 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 and, and in Hanson, um, been pretty fortunate at the Whitman Playground dur during the day. I have to say, and I don't know why, um, but the um, 
with when you talk about how um, House Geographic has a lot of salt marshes and um, different pools and tides and things like that. Um, mm -hmm. I know when I'm in the public and I speak to a lot of people, they're convinced that mosquitoes don't exist on the ocean and you're safe at the beach. Is that true? Well, you, you probably have better breezes at the beach. That's, the why, that's why you're feeling safer. As we know, mosquitoes tend not to be strong flyers. And uh, I live right on the ocean. And uh, if, if I get out of that br ocean breeze, now I might find a mosquito chasing after me. But they're there. They're there. They're the salt marshes uh, certainly produce their share of, uh, of, of mosquitoes. And uh, yeah, so the, the, the situation I talked about in Hull that was really kind of unique um, is we had to trap to figure out what kind of mosquitoes there were. So we set up a trap down there and we found this is a mosquito that was most common found uh, down south. You know, if you, if you were down in uh, Maryland and, and, and south of that, this was very common, but very unique to have that mosquito up here. So I guess that speaks a little bit about climate is changing. And a Absolutely. Cli climate and vector-borne diseases mm. go, ha go hand in hand. And unfortunately, you and I both know we don't know enough about it. And there's a lot of research that needs to be done. Um, and you and I both know there's not a great deal of funding for it. Um, well, it is. It is. I mean, funding is, no matter what your cause is, no matter what your issue is, finding the funding is, uh, is not the easiest thing in the world. Um, do you think that the powers to be put enough priority into funding and research and control measures for vector-borne diseases? You know, I, I, that's something I, I really don't know how to answer that because I'm really not in contact with those folks. I, I really don't know how they establish their priorities. So it'd be really unfair for me to judge what's going on there. No, and I can appreciate that. And mm. I, I ask you because you have so much experience in municipal government and being with the mosquito control projects in the schools and the cherry sheets and, and with financing. Um, so, but a tr truthful story, I'm, and I, I'd agree with Dan, I don't have the answers for that either. Um, so we've gone over repellents, mm -hmm. eliminating stand-in water. Um, is there anything in mosquito control that is frustrating or makes the job that much <clears throat> harder? Well, I think, you know, this, this, the, there are a lot of answers there, believe it or not. I have found uh, in, in one particular town, let me start with this one town, I was, uh, uh, talking to people there, they had never heard of us. And I did, I did a cable show with this particular Board of Health. And I said, what's funny about that is what the, what the Board of Health did is they did a survey uh, before I, I did the show with them to get, get questions from people. And a lot of the population said, I, I've never heard of Plymouth County. What do you mean? That I can actually call people who are going to come and spray. And I said, the, the funny part about that is our calls from that town had doubled. <laughs> So we had a bunch of people in town who absolutely knew they could call us and use our services. We had a whole other bunch of people that had no idea who we were. And in talking to the schools, they wanted to know how much it would cost to spray. And so, so uh, I, I think trying to make people more aware of who we are would make our job easier. That, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, that, that's frustrating to me because that's part of my job, trying to reach out, make people aware of Plymouth County Mosquito Control, how to get in touch with us, what we can do for them, and also what they can do for themselves. So that, that, that is probably a, a big one. And, uh, and, and certainly there are areas that, um, that, that are of concern. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of people have, and I shouldn't say a lot, a number of people have decided become no sprays. They don't want anyone coming near them to spray. And, and, and what they don't realize is, we don't spray unless you ask us to. But now that you've made that decision to become a no spray, you've pretty much prevented us from spraying your neighbors. And so we're seeing a, a lot of people, especially down in the areas that are high risk, critical risk, uh, that they're getting very frustrated because one person on that particular street has decided to become a no spray and we have to uh, honor that because we, we can't absolutely control uh, down to the foot where that spray is, that, that mist is, is going to go. And, 
And, and so that, that, makes it, that makes it difficult for those people. There is some tension among neighbors <laughs> over that right now, as you can imagine. Uh, a lot of people down in the southern part of uh, uh, the county, uh, they're frightened for this. They're, they're very frightened with it. And they're taking it very, very serious. Uh, schools down there that are in a critical certainly have canceled their sports, out, you know, their evening sports. There's no more under the lights for this year because that risk level isn't going to go down you know, until after that first hard frost. And God only knows when that might be. And so they're very frightened with it. And so as you're frightened, you find out you can't even get our services. What those people don't know, I, I don't think the people that are no sprays, that doesn't prevent their neighbors from hiring, hiring a private company that only applies the no spray to us. They can go out and find one of these other private groups out there who can come in and spray. And um, you know, that's, that's another issue that we probably don't want to get into. So I'm actually going to ask you about it. Um, what is the major differences and we've talked a lot about this mm -hmm. off camera. We talked a lot about this as a commissioner. And I still do a great deal of education about it in the public because it, inf it infuriates me personally. Mm -hmm. um, what are the major differences between state organized mosquito control versus your commercial and private applicators? Well, I, you know, I, that I, I, I know that our guys and everybody has to be licensed. I know that. I know what our policies are. For example, when we go out to spray, uh, we spray starting around 2 o'clock in the morning till either an hour or a half hour uh, before dawn. And, and we want to stop that spraying because we don't want to damage the bee population. And uh, so I don't know what the policies are with the private, uh, with the private uh, vendors. I, I, people have asked me that, and I'll always say, well, ask them what their product is. Is this product something that's going to be uh, dangerous for bees? Are you going to use it when the bees are active? How do you make sure the bees aren't going to come in contact with it? But I don't know any of these companies individually, what they do, the products they're using, but I encourage people who are thinking about it to ask those questions to anyone they're talking to. So the, the, a great <clears throat> deal of what the organized mosquito control does and policies is on the, lab on the labeling laws. It's on um, the labeling laws. Yeah, and you know, you're restricted what you can do, when you can do it, how much you can use. Absolutely. And, I, and those people should have, um, obviously, they have those same restrictions. They have those same restrictions. I don't know who polices it. I mean, that's just something that I just don't know. No, I, I completely understand. So, yeah. so what we just learned is that the commercial and the pri private companies have to abide by the labeling laws, too. And you should be asking the commercial or private companies questions which they have to supply you with an answers for um, <coughs> because yes we're all concerned about Tripoli, West Nile virus, emerging mosquito-borne viruses and a lot of us hire private and commercial companies because of the tick-borne viruses um, and I get it um, and we just want to make sure that we're doing our part to protect the pollinators and to protect the non-target species. Um, so please, ask the questions you need to ask to your commercial and private applicators. And going back to um, any areas, you were talking about the no sprays mm -hmm. and how the neighborhoods couldn't do it. Um, I know that there were different groups um, that don't allow the mosquito control projects mm -hmm. to do biological control um, or larvicide um, hundreds of thousands of acres. Um, I understand that they're allowed to do this by law, mm -hmm. but does it make you guys' job more difficult? Well, if you, if you try, you know, the whole idea of the Mosquito Control Project is we have all these communities that come together. And, and, and to say, you can't just control mosquitoes by controlling your town. You have to take a big picture look at it. And so mosquitoes don't know, wait a minute, I'm in Whitman. I'm not supposed to cross that line into Abington. They're, they're going over there. The fact that we need these communities together, but there clearly are holes in, in, in our coverage. There are clearly are holes in things we can do. Uh, we can't uh, enter any property that's uh, um, uh, Audubon property. Um, and, and, you know, that's their right to do that, but that's a big chunk of land. Uh, the trustees of reservations, a lot of nice land people use, and they, they don't want us uh, entering those properties either. 
I mean, that's their right, and you know, you certainly respect that. I, it, it, and you say, does it make it more difficult? Yeah, if you're really trying to make significant reductions to mosquito populations, it does make a difference. I'd ask you if it endangers public health, but I think that would be very controversial and in, 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 in run. <coughs> I think we'd well, be making it. Well, yeah, and I, I can't, it, you know, only the commissioners can speak for that. I, you know, that's not an area. <laughs> I can, you know, I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to go there. <laughs> no, I, I can respect that. So when you're on these areas that mosquito control is restricted from reducing the mosquitoes, um, and since they don't know town borders, and we can't choose which mosquito may or may not be infected, it's extremely important to take personal responsibility mm -hmm. and to ensure that you're, sp that you're spraying um, before you go. I mean, you could walk to the mailbox and get bit, and it could be that infected mosquito, um, but it's just that much more important when we know there's no control measures allowed that we take personal responsibility to protect ourselves, our pets, and our loved ones. Um, and, and I think those those groups would also encourage anyone coming on their property to use the appropriate repellent. I'm sure they do. No, I know some of the some of the properties. They're they're very big on prevention for ticks, mm -hmm. um, and you prevent ticks and mosquitoes the same way. Um, so it's a it's a two in one when you're taking personal prevention measures with repellents. Yeah, look at those repellents to make sure they're also. Uh, good for tick protection as well, and 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 that it should say so right right on the product. Not all products are 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 for both. Some of them are for both, and you just have to pay close attention. Those are very good points. Um, there's also a product called Perithrin. Mm -hmm. um, would you recommend that for those that are avid outdoorsmen? Yeah, I mean it, that's something that you would put on your clothing, you'd put on your 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 boots. Uh, uh, what I don't recommend is you, you, you plunge through all this brush wearing uh, shorts like I am today. Even with, even with repellent on, it's probably not the brightest idea going out there. Um, so speaking of clothing, how should one dress to be more, or I should say, less exposed? Well, we, we, we know the message, the long pants, the, the long shirt. Uh, light colored, loose fitting, so the mosquitoes would have trouble biting through it. Um, and, and perhaps a lot of people are doing it, I haven't seen it. Um, and I have to admit myself, I, I wear shorts as much as I can. I, I wear the short sleeve shirts as much as I can. And I have quite a target on the top of my head where somebody could take a meal. Well, a, I, a mosquito. Right, I, <laughs> so using the repellent is important to me, but the summer is gonna get very hot and you wanna enjoy them. This short. And so we need to enjoy as much as we can, but also be as safe as we can. Absolutely, I'm, I'm guilty too. I'm always in yeah. shorts, and if I have long sleeve pants on, I'm in my flip flops, <coughs> and I'm in my flip flops until the negative numbers come out, and I need yeah. my Eskimo coat to stay warm. So, but you know I, what I'd like to add though, is in case anybody here has not heard of us, Plymouth County Mosquito Control. If you're living in Plymouth County, you're part of the project. <clears throat> Your town voted at some point or other to become a member, and every year they pay for our services off of the cherry sheet. They get the money. It's taken back again so they can uh, request our services. So you, we don't charge you because you've, you've already paid. You have already paid for our services, and we can come out, check out standing water if, uh, on your property, uh, or if you think there's some place near where you're living that's breeding mosquitoes that we may not know about, we're more than happy to come out and check it out. If we find them, we'll take action to try to stop that. Or if you want us to spray uh, for, for the adult mosquitoes, you're having a time and say, boy, I really would like you guys to come out ahead of time and spray, and uh, we'll do that. And uh, you just have to give us a call and be patient <laughs> with, that, with that phone number. And, uh, um, and we're also, take a look at our website. So much good information on the website. Just type in, and whatever search engine you're using, PlymouthMosquito.org, PlymouthMosquito.org, and you can find out all of our services. You can find about our rep the repellents we're talking about. You can find out about the pesticides we're using. Uh, and if you request our services, and I'm, I'm glad this came up, 
Um, you can go on our website and uh, you can find the truck spray routes. And so you can say, Giddy, did I get sprayed this week? Well, you can take a look each day of the week and you can see every street in every town we've been in for each day of that week. The only thing I would caution people is if they go on and they say, gee, my street has been sprayed. I see it's on the list. Unless you called, you didn't get sprayed. When we see like, uh, like in Whitman, we see, Be is it Whitman Avenue has Bedford Street. It's Whitman has Bedford it Street out there. And so if it says Bedford Street, that doesn't mean we went the length of Route 18 spraying. It means somebody on Bedford Street, one or more people have requested our spraying. So don't let that discourage you. If you didn't make the call, we probably didn't spray you. So give us a call. So, and to be more effective, is it still allowed with the mosquito control projects to get all your neighbors together all at once and yeah, have them sprayed? Absolutely. And, and so f that's real difficult for people uh, to, to organize that. But a lot of people, believe it or not, there are still fax machines out there. And they'll get together and they'll have the neighborhood. They'll write down all the addresses, everybody's name, and they'll fax it into us. And clearly, if we can do a whole neighborhood, that's more effective than doing it a house at a time. No question about it. But you can also call with that information. Get that list down, and whoever answers the phone at the project will be very patient going through that list with you. Excellent. And the phone number of the Plymouth Mosquito Control Project is 781-585-5450. Um, the show's almost getting ready to wrap up. I know the one thing that you haven't touched on for services mm -hmm. for mosquito <clears throat> control is water management. And I personally think that's so important for the public to know because they're under this mis misguided and uh, uneducated areas where they believe that mosquito control projects only spray pesticides. They only w want to p poison. They only want to reduce mosquitoes. When in fact, with the water management, you're helping the fish populations. You're well, helping the, yeah, other you're right. getting what, what water. With the water, water management, is low. Uh, and, and we do that year round. It, more after mosquito season ends, and we go out to those clogged ditches. We'll clean those out, things like that. Because if we get water flowing freely, mosquitoes can't breed in it. They need shallow shallow standing water that's protected. But if we can give any kind of flow to that water, the mosquitoes uh, can't breathe there. Also, uh, the thing that we do uh, now is also we have a tire service. You know, so if you have know somebody, maybe you, you have tires in your backyard you want to get rid of, but maybe they're charging $10, $20 a piece, we'll come and pick them up after the mosquito season. Right now we're kind of busy. But after, uh, after that first frost, um, we will pick up those tires at no charge. You have one, five, ten, whatever, we'll come and get them. We actually had a place in, uh, yeah, I believe it was Norwell, we, we took 3,000 tires out of a deserted piece of property because those are prime breeding spots for mosquitoes. So we'll do that. I think that's a great addition to what we do for folks. That's fantastic. And it was many years coming and mm -hmm. hard to implement that. But I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you. And I'm sorry for it to end because Dan and I could speak for hours to everybody in the public and give you so much information. Um, but unfortunately, today we're out of time. And we look forward to seeing you next time. And please do not hesitate to contact the Plymouth County Mosquito Control if you're within Plymouth County. And if you're outside of the county, North Fork, Bristol, um, Central Mass, they have mosquito control projects too. Have an awesome day and make sure to protect yourself from the bite.